Welcome to Honest News. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'd like to read some scripture to you. Let's open in prayer before we get into the scripture. There are those that call this the Hall of Faith. The world has the Hall of Fame. But there are those that call this the Hall of Faith. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that it's not impossible to please you. It is not impossible to please you. Lord, there is a way to please you. We pray, Lord, that your people will understand these things, that they will be inspired by the Word, by the Holy Scripture, that they will be encouraged, Lord, and comforted in this time. We ask that you bless and anoint your people to receive the Word. We ask that you bless and anoint as we minister your Word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by faith, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand did you hear that? Through faith, we understand. You're not going to understand except through faith the things of God. You're not going to understand the things of God. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. How did he do it? By faith. by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. How did he do it? By faith. And he was not found. Because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. How did he do it? How did Enoch please God? By faith. In fact, without faith, it is impossible 
to please him. Let that sink in. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. Did you hear that? There's no way around it. You must believe. Believe what? You must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that do their best. Is that what it says? Them that seek him once in a while. Them that pray when they wake up in the morning and then the rest of the day they just do their own thing. There's a whole list of things we could say that faith is not. But what is faith? I think the scripture makes it clear here what faith is. Diligently seeking God. Diligence. Diligence. Folks, I want you to understand something. That's not lukewarm. We are to love God with all our heart. With all our mind. With all our soul with all our strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. How much is all? Does that leave much room for anything else? If you love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, Amen? God requires 100%. It's you and I that change that. But he requires 100%. He wants all. Amen? Enoch walked with God. Walked with God. God did not walk with Enoch. Enoch walked with God. Enoch walked with God. Amen. God did not have to drag Enoch along. Enoch did not crawl beside God. He wasn't a baby. Amen? God didn't have to reach down and pick Enoch up all the time because he had fallen down. Enoch walked with God. Years ago, when I first entered Bible school, I was prophesied over. And I had gotten into a situation where I thought, where is God? I feel like I'm on my own here. And it seemed that something had changed. 
And I was prophesied over by one of the teachers in the Bible school. Thus saith the Good Shepherd. You've been wondering what's been going on. He says, I have set you down to learn how to walk. I mean, no, when you get first saved and you're born again, you're a babe. The Lord carries you. Amen. But the scripture says, Enoch walked with God. He walked with God. But it also says that Enoch pleased God. It is not impossible to please God. But it is impossible to please God without faith. We are to live by faith and walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith. We live by faith. Amen? This whole chapter in Hebrews chapter 11 is about faith. Amen. Praise the living God. Let's read some more. The Hall of Faith. By faith. Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear. How did he do it? How did he prepare an ark to the saving of his house? By faith! By the which he condemned the world. Because Noah was walking by faith, living by faith, the world around him was condemned. Noah didn't condemn the world. They were condemned because Noah lived, walked by faith. Amen. He became the heir of righteousness which is by faith. How does faith come? Enoch was warned of God. See, e or not Enoch, Noah was warned of God. But the difference between Noah and Enoch is Enoch's a type of the bride, type of the elders the overcomers. Noah is a type of the church as a whole. Amen. Enoch received a revelation from God that there was a flood coming. It says after he received that revelation, it says he walked with God. But we don't see Noah walking with God. We see Noah being warned of God. There's a difference. He was moved with fear. Enoch walked with God. Amen. Enoch walked with God. What sweet fellowship. Praise the Lord. 
There was a difference between the time of Enoch and the time of Noah. Noah was moved with fear. Moved with fear. We know the church is going to be moved with fear. When that dragon realizes he's been cast down to the earth, he's going to persecute the woman, the church. And it says the woman's going to flee into the wilderness. Here we see Noah, warned of God. There's a flood coming. And it's closer than it was when Enoch received word about it. How many know there's some that understand some things that others don't? And because they understand these things and believe these things, they prepare themselves accordingly. If you did not know something, how could you prepare for it? Many times, storms take folks unawares. They didn't know it was coming or they weren't paying attention when the warning went out. But you got to understand that Noah, many years later, after Enoch walked with God, after he was translated, Noah was being warned of God, of the very thing Enoch already knew about. Years and years prior to. There's some things that the overcomers know and understand that the church as a whole do not understand. Amen? And that's why they're going to be left behind. Amen. Scripture says the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. Why? For the preparing of the ark. After the bride is gone, the long-suffering of God will wait while the church is fed for three and a half years. You see, in the first three and a half years is not the wrath of God, folks. The first three and a half years is going to be the wrath of Satan. And the church is going to Flee. Even as Noah was warned of God and it says he was moved with fear. The church is going to be moved with fear to get ready to escape God's wrath. The last three and a half years of that seven years is going to be God's wrath. And even the foolish virgins will be on the earth after the church is caught up in the middle of the year. I, anybody out there listening, you can know some things that others don't know. Now, it wasn't a competition. It wasn't favoritism. Enoch walked with God long before Noah came on the scene. Amen. In fact, if you do your math and you study this out, you'll find out that even as the revelation came to Enoch, when your son dies, the flood will come. And it happened. The day the flood came upon the earth, Enoch's son, Methuselah, died. Anybody out there listening? God gave Enoch a word. Long before 
it came to pass. So what does those like Enoch know in the church that the church doesn't know? Same things that the church should know. The bride already knows. Why? Because we believe it. Amen. Scripture says that the word did not profit Israel because they did not mix faith with the word. The same word that you and I receive today, the Jews did not mix faith with. Amen. You got to mix faith with the word, folks. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Enoch walked with God by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Enoch pleased God. It's not impossible to please God. But it is impossible to please God without faith. Jesus did always those things that pleased the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb, people. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should afterward receive for an inheritance, what did he do? He obeyed. What does faith require? He obeyed. He obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. Listen to me. That will set you apart. Amen. When God speaks and you obey God, that will set you apart. And that's what happened, folks. That's why the world was condemned as Noah prepared the ark. There's a separation that takes place when you walk by faith. You won't have to push the world away. Listen to me. They won't want to have anything to do with you if you're walking by faith. Amen. The world will hate you. They'll hate you. They'll reject you. They'll persecute you. Because you're walking by faith. Because you live by faith. Because you're obeying God. By faith, he sojourned in a land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. What's God's, what's faith based on, people? What's God's faith based on? Jesus said, have the faith of God. What is God's faith based on? Is it based on a lie? What's it based on? Is it based on a gamble? Is it based upon risk? No! It's based upon God's promise! God is not a man that he'd lie. He's true to his word. 
Faith is based upon promise. God's promise. Oh, my Lord and my God. For he looked for a city. Are you looking for that city? That city that John saw? Where the Lamb is the light. He looked for a city which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. How did he know? How did Abraham know to look for a city that wasn't on this earth? By faith. He got a word. God revealed to Abraham, there's a city that's not of this world. And Abraham was looking for that city. Hmm. Through faith, God doesn't just deal with males. He deals with females. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Quit making excuses. Because she judged him faithful who had promised. Get that in your heart. She judged him faithful. She judged him faithful. How do you judge the Lord? Has he been good to you? Has he been faithful? Don't expect the same outcome that Sarah experienced. If you don't judge God faithful. Something I noticed about Hebrews here, there's no mention of the fact that Sarai and Abram failed God and produced Ishmael. Did you notice that? And the names that are used in the book of Hebrews is not Sarah is, is not Abram and Sarai. No. God inspired the writer to use their new names. Abraham and Sarah. It doesn't say Sarai judged God faithful. It doesn't say that Abram was strong in faith, giving glory to God, that he staggered not at the promise of God. It says Abraham. Anybody out there listening? We all know what Sarai did, produced Ishmael. Anybody out there listening? God changed Abram to Abraham, God changed Sarai to Sarah. Sarai means contentious. Sarah means princess. God changed Sarai. Amen. From one that was contentious to one that became like a princess. Mm. Hallelujah. She judged God faithful. Amen. Not at first. 
Oh, blessed be his name, people. Blessed be his name. Is it going to take a change before we judge God faithful? Is it going to take a change before we walk with God? Oh, yeah. Enoch didn't always walk with God, folks. It says after he begat Methuselah, he began to walk with God. God spoke to Abram and said, Walk thou before me and be perfect. And Abram became Abraham. When's the last time you got a word from God? The one that spoke the worlds into existence. He can speak a word into your spirit and change you. Amen? In the Old Testament, we see Daniel. God is speaking to Daniel, and Daniel says, I, would, I retain no strength. Couldn't even stand before God. And he heard these words. Be strong. Yea, be strong. And Daniel said, I was strengthened. Be strong. Yea, be strong. And I was strengthened. Years after being away from the Bible school, I called my pastor one day, as I often did, for encouragement, for direction. And I was on the phone with my pastor, and I was really discouraged. And I noticed something after I got off the phone. I wasn't discouraged anymore. Amen. Was that because my pastor is so powerful? No. It's because my pastor let God use him. Amen. My pastor let God Use him. Instead of giving me his ideas and his thoughts. Amen. My pastor like a conduit. Like a branch in the vine. Let the life of God flow through him. And I was strengthened. Amen, people. Blessed be his name. How many know you don't grow in the kingdom by just eating the word? You grow by speaking the truth. It's by speaking, sharing the word. That's how you grow. That's why folks aren't growing today. They receive the word, but they don't. Share it. They don't share it. See, whether you're listening or not out there, whether you're receiving what I'm sharing or not, Brother Joseph's growing. It's not in vain. It's not in vain, folks. Speaking the truth in love, growing thereby. When, I, when the Lord revealed that to me one day, boy, I'll tell you, folks, it doesn't matter anymore what you do. As long as I'm obeying God, I'm going to grow. I'm going to develop. Amen? 
Now, our heart is to see you do the same. Not just receive the words Brother Joseph shares with you and just sit on them. Just stuff it inside and leave it in there. No. Encourage somebody. Let God use you. Let God use you. Let God use you to be a blessing to someone. Not by you leaning to your own understanding. Not by you trying to help them. But by you laying down your life. So that someone else might be touched by Jesus. Someone might be encouraged. Somebody might be calmed in the storm. Somebody might receive some direction and get saved. Amen? We have to be lights, folks. If it's ever been dark, it's dark now. But we're to be the lights of the world. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your honest works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Doesn't matter if the world around us is being dishonest. You and I must be pleasing God. Amen? Honesty is not just the best policy, folks. Honesty is the only way to get to heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Without guile, without fault, before the throne of God, He's able to present us faultless before His throne. You remember when Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? Pilate went out and said, I find no fault in this man. I find no fault in him. Amen. What is truth? No fault. Faultless. Pure. Holy clean, no marks, blessed be his name, no blemishes, no spots or wrinkles or any such thing, is it possible, is it possible for a man to be perfect, walk thou before me and be perfect. Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. When are we going to receive his words? Abraham did, or Abram did, and he was changed to Abraham. And when Abram got his change, Sarai got hers. Why? Because they are one flesh. Amen. It wasn't Sarai that got changed first. It was Abram that received the word. God has set the husband to be the head. And the head must hear the word of God. Amen? Where are the ears? They're on the head. Where are the eyes? On the head. Where's the mouth? On the head. Hello. Blessed be his name.
when the head is the head and the head is listening and obeying. Hello, the body will follow. Unless the upper is separated from the lower. Amen. We are to be one. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Amen. Glory to God in all things. How much more to be one with him? See, when Jesus was on the earth, he didn't have a bride. He didn't have a wife. Amen? But he's going to. He's going to. Amen. Praise God. He's the head to the church. He's the head to the church. Amen. Glory to God. The body follows the head. Glory to God. Blessed be his name. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Ready. She's ready. Glory. She made herself ready. Blessed be his name, people. She heard. She obeyed. She heard and she obeyed long before the church. Are you listening? That's why all through the scripture we hear these words. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Even in Jesus' ministry, Jesus said, He that hath an ear, let him hear. Amen. Praise the Lord. What did the Father say? Bright cloud overshadowed Jesus and those that were standing there with Jesus. This is my beloved Son. in whom I am well pleased. Hear, hear, hear. Listen, hear him. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is possible. To please God. The devil's a liar. It is possible. To please God. Amen. Glory to his name people. He's going to have some sons. Like his own son. 
do always those things that please the Father. Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. What I see the Father doing, that I do. Amen. Blessed be his name, people. He came not to do his own will, but the will of him that sent him. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus did not come to do his own will. He was sent by the Father to do the will of the Father. Not his own will. Blessed be his name, people. To be like Jesus. That's all I ask. Is to be like him. That's what my heart. My heart cries out. To please the father. I want to please him, folks. I really do. I want to please God. My heart is to please God. To hear him say, well done. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. But more than that, more than that, for him to be willing to say, this is my bride and not be ashamed. This is my wife and not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise his name. I want my life to count for him in service every day in all that I do in all that I say I want my life to count for him I want my life to count for him in service every day in all that I do in all that I say I want my life to count for him how about you I want my life to count for him in service every day in all that I do in all that I say I want my life to count for him Hallelujah. It is possible to please God. It is possible. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing shall be impossible with God. It is possible to please God. It is possible. Oh, I feel his presence. I feel his presence, people. Whether you understand it or not, that's what your heart really wants to do, is please your creator. Amen. Look what men do to please men. Men pleasers. Those that seek the glory of man. Look what they do. 
Amen. Look what they do. Defraud the poor. They defraud the poor. Are you listening? To please their rich buddies. Huh? Look what they do. They defraud the poor. Injustice to be a man pleaser. Do you see what I did? Do you see, you see what I did for you? Aren't you happy with me? Huh? You don't care about the poor? Do you see what I did for you? But look what Jesus did for the poor. He became poor so that we might be rich. Amen. No greater love than this, than a man laid down his life for his friends. Listen, folks, if you never hear another message, if this is the only message you have, and you is to listen to this every day. This is all you need. It's all here in this message, the word, the revelation of the word. We didn't just preach to you the word. We preached to you the word of faith. And if you will receive the word of faith, which we've preached unto you, you will grow up in faith, and please God. Amen? Well, I'll just wait to the next message. Maybe I'll get my change there. Why not listen now? Why not receive the word now? Why wait? Why wait? Hallelujah. God the Father, can you imagine? God the Father overshadows. A cloud overshadows him. The Father says, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when Peter was recording this, Peter said, such a voice came from excellent glory. When this majestic voice, some thought it thundered. Folks, I've heard his voice like a thunder. And I was looking for a place to hide when I was rebuked of the Father. Shook the whole house. I was looking for a place to hide. Finally, I hid under the kitchen table. You might think that's funny. But we're talking about God here. Like Adam in the cool of the day. But when Adam was hiding from God. I wasn't hiding from God in that sense, but I was hiding from his voice. Because I'm not perfect yet in that condition that I was in. That was years ago. And I'm under the kitchen table. And finally, I said, God, if that was you, because I wasn't sure because it was raining out, and I thought, well, that's got to be, that's got to be thunder from the rain, and it wasn't really raining that hard, and I'm thinking, it's got to be thunder with the rain. It shook the whole house. But what you may not understand is, I had just visited Rick Joyner, Morning Star Meeting. I had left there after they were talking about some crazy thing, this idea that that the baseball games were prophetic words to the church. 
the professional baseball games. Some crazy prophetic word. And anyway, I went back home and I'm laying on the couch trying to take a nap. And folks, listen to me. I saw this diamond, like a baseball diamond, that was hovering over me. Are you listening? We're coming into the time of lying signs and wonders. And I'm going to tell you right now, the devil can put on a show. I saw this diamond hovering over me in thin air. And the devil is trying to get me to believe that prophetic message over in that meeting, trying to get me tied up with that. And it was during that time that I, it, the house shook. I heard a great thunder. And now I can say I heard a great voice. I was rebuked of God. God was delivering me. I'm, I'm under that table and I said, God, if that's you that just spoke, what did you say? And immediately, the words came to my spirit. If you hear the voice of God, harden not your hearts. And God's voice delivered me because I obeyed his voice. I never went to that, those meetings again. Are you listening, folks? The next day, I'm walking through the kitchen, and I hear these words in my spirit, new beginnings. And I'm thinking to myself, new beginnings, what's that all about? And during the course of that day, somebody said to me, there's a place in the city here nearby that is called New Beginnings. And uh, I thought, that's interesting. <laughs> that's what I heard today when I was walking through my kitchen. New Beginnings. And so he knew. He knew the founder of it. He knew the person that was the head over it. He called him. He says, you have any need over there of minister? Need anybody over there to help you out? And uh, he said, no. And so he let me talk to the, this man on the phone. And I said, and I don't even know why I said it, but I guess God wanted me to say it. I said, well, I play the guitar. I sing a little bit. He says, oh, you do. Well, just so happens we're looking for someone that can serve in that capacity. Listen to me, folks. Listen to me. There are some. There are some on the earth that hear his voice and they obey. Amen. Glory to God. There are some walking by faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They end up making me a counselor. These were men off the streets that needed to be re rehabilitated. These, they were drunks and broken lives. Amen. But that's where God sent me. They made me a counselor there to counsel those men. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is leading us away from danger. He was leading me away from Morning Star and Rick Joyner. Are you listening? When God speaks, he's not going to lead you into deception. He's not going to lead you wrong. If you'll obey him, he'll lead you out. He'll lead you away from danger. 
He'll lead you away from trouble. Amen, folks. Glory to God in the highest. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Time doesn't permit in this message, but I could share with you testimony after testimony of hearing God's voice and doing the will of God, people. And there's nothing like it. Loving his voice, loving to hear his voice and obeying his voice. Nothing brings more joy. Nothing. Nothing brings more joy to my heart than to please my father, to please God. When he's happy, I'm happy. Huh? Huh? Try that. When he's happy, I'm happy. Well, I want God to be happy with my happiness. Is your happiness in his will? Amen. Glory to God. Feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Folks, some are going to sit with him in his throne. Whether you do or not, some are. That's why he stands at the door and knocks. It's his voice knocking. And he wants to come in. And he wants to sup with you and I. He wants to make overcomers out of us. Amen? God bless you. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan reigns.